I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com and in this video we're going to talk all about the brand new interior in the brand new 2018 Jeep JL. Jeep made a lot of changes from the 2017 and even 2018 JKs to this brand new and redesigned 2018 JL and one of the biggest changes is the interior. The interior is also one of those things that is a little bit of a love it or hate it game. Some people really like the additional creature comforts and the more car like feel of the interior of the JL while others prefer for the more rough and tumble interior of the past. Some things specifically like that new nav screen, people either love it or they hate it, but we are gonna go through everything, both the good and the bad. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you can check out some of the other review videos that we've done on the JL, as well as all of the builds and the other cool stuff that we're gonna do with this brand new Jeep down the line. But for now, let's get into some of those interior changes. Of course, some of the biggest changes that were made in the Jeep are going to be the dash and everything that you can get to from the driver's seat. And I want to get into that. We're also going to go out on the road to show you some of those features. But before we jump in there, I want to show you some of the other stuff that Jeep did because they really left nothing untouched. In the back area here, they redid the center section that your rear seat passengers have access to. So they're actually going to have a couple of blowers so they get some HVAC back there, which is really nice. Not something that you can change from what's blowing up front, but still get some extra circulation, some extra heating or cooling in the back area, which is nice. And again, that's gonna be a change from past generations. You have your window switches in that center section as well. And then you have a 120 volt outlet as well as a USB charging port. So your rear seat passengers, when they're on the phone, they can be charging. You can also also use that for any other accessories that you might need. There's also a bit of a storage area. It's pretty small. I don't know exactly what you're going to be using that for. It's not cup holders, but there is a little bit of storage back there as well. Jeep has completely redesigned these seats. They look good. They're very comfortable. They're going to be a 60-40 split. And in the center, you actually have a little area that can pop down if you're not having somebody sit there. And that becomes your cup holders for your rear seat passengers. So again, just a little bit of additional creature comfort that's built right into the Jeep. Now, that's not the only bit of function that's built into these seats. You also have a little bit of an easier way to get these folded down. So you're gonna have two different levers that you're gonna use when folding those seats. One is gonna flip the headrest down out of the way, and then two actually flips the whole seat down. So you don't have to worry about pulling the headrests out, adjusting them, or adjusting the front seats to make some additional room when you're folding the seats. So something that was thought through very well by Jeep and really well executed. So of course, this is the Sahara, so this has the leather seats. These are, of course, the black ones, but you can also get them in a tan leather. If you step down to the Sport or the Sport S, you're going to have cloth interior, either black or tan as well. One of the other things that I want to mention while we're here before we move to that cargo area is the map light. The map lights in this Jeep are LED, and you have not only a, an ambient light in the center, but also four individual map lights that can be turned on and off by your four passengers. So just one more creature comfort. So let's take a step back to the cargo space here because there were definitely some big changes in that area as well. One of those is gonna be staring you right in the face when you open this up, if you have the option, and that is going to be this very large Alpine sub. We have the Sahara, so it has the Alpine sub and the nine speaker stereo system in it. If you have a Sport or a Sport S, you're going to have to get that option if you want it. But if you're somebody who really enjoys music, that's probably going to be a good option for you to take a look at. It's going to come with all of the components that you would usually have to upgrade to right out of the factory. So that's going to be the most glaring thing, but you also have a couple of other changes here. You can lift up this area and there's some storage underneath that's going to actually have a drain built right into it. So not that it is insulated at all, but you could use it to throw some drinks and some ice in if you want, or just general storage that's going to be hidden from prying eyes. You're still going to have all the spots for your nut and bolt hardware for when you do have your uh, doors removed or your hard top removed. Just like in the JK, you're gonna have that. And also you're going to have your jack in the back space as well. Of course, you're going to have all of your cargo tie downs. They're gonna be there to keep things from sliding around in the back of the Jeep. And a couple of the other things I wanna point out are right over here. So you're gonna have an additional 12 volt outlet. That's gonna be for when you're camping, when you're tailgating, or when you're done wheeling and you're trying to air up some tires with a compressor. This is gonna be really easy to get to for you. You also have a little clip up here that's designed specifically to hold your wiring harness and your washer tube from your hardtop when you have your hardtop removed. Now, again, like a lot of this stuff, that's not going to impact your everyday life while you're using your Jeep. 
but it does prove that Jeep really thought through this vehicle when they were designing it and purposely thought of a lot of those little things that do just make it that much of a nicer vehicle. So that really covers a lot of the stuff in this back space here. Now let's hop into the driver's seat. I'll go through a couple of the options up there and then we'll hit the road. So when you first get in the JL, it does feel a little bit more refined and a little bit more car-like. And that's something that a lot of you guys didn't like when the JK came out over the TJ. Jeeps in general have always been very rough and tumble, um, very utilitarian, not a lot of those creature comforts. So when you start adding that, a lot of you feel like that gets away from being a Jeep. In my opinion, this is still very much a Jeep. It's just a bit of a nicer Jeep. It's just a little bit more something that I would feel comfortable and I would want to drive on a daily basis as well as hitting the trails. So everything in here has been completely redesigned. You have a very nice feeling leather steering wheel. The dash itself is leather. This area right here is obviously very eye-catching. This is something that a lot of you guys aren't really crazy about as well. It looks like an iPad was just kind of stuck in the middle of the dash here. And I get that, I understand where you're coming from. On the flip side of that, it makes it very easy to see and very easy to get to. So whether you like the styling or not, that's up to you, but I definitely like the functionality of this piece. Now, in the sport model, you're only going to get a Uconnect 3 with a five inch screen. If you go up to the Sport S, you can upgrade to the Uconnect 4 with the larger seven inch screen. In the Sahara and the Rubicon, you also have the option to go up to the 8.4 inch screen with the navigation system. On top of that, you also have a second screen that's going to be between your two analog gauges. You have a couple of gauges that are on there all the time, those things that you always need to know about, and then also a lot of things that you can customize and change and really set it up exactly how you want it for driving on-road and off-road. Then in the center section, again, redesigned. Everything was redesigned. That goes without saying at this point. Being that this is the Sahara and it has the cold weather package, you're gonna have buttons for your heated seats, your heating steering wheel. Again, a lot of those creature comforts that certainly aren't necessary, but do make this a much more comfortable daily driver. Of course, the gear select has been redesigned on this automatic transmission. You have a Jeep right up on top here, which is kind of a cool feature, a little bit of an Easter egg, a little bit of a throwback um, to the early days of Jeep. It's very comfortable, very easy to get to. Again, just, just sticking with the well thought out theme, we have the key here, and there's a little bit of a slot right between your cup holders where you can set that and it fits right in there because it is a push to start. So that just gives you a nice place to store that. So again, they really did a lot more thinking with this this Jeep. Here you have the handles on the A pillar in the back. You also have the same thing on the B pillar. If you want to still get some aftermarket grab handles for up here, you can, but you don't need to now because you have some integrated right into the Jeep. Again, my overall feeling about the interior is that it is a little bit more luxurious feeling, a little bit more car feeling, but in my personal opinion, I like that. I think that this is still very much a Jeep. It's still a very capable Jeep on-road and off-road. It just is a little more comfortable to drive on-road, and I certainly don't think that's a bad thing. So let's hit the road, and I'll show you a couple more of these features that make a little bit more sense to show you while we're actually driving. So now that we're actually in the Jeep driving on the road, the first thing that you'll notice is how quiet it is. Now this Jeep does have a hard top on it and this is the full factory hard top. You know, there's nothing to flap, it's, it's very quiet. It's a hard top. If you have the power soft top or the full non-powered soft top, you may get a little bit more wind noise in the Jeep. This also has a factory set of those HT tires on it. So they're very quiet, there's no tire whine at all. I always forget when I get in this Jeep and I drive it that first time that it's fully up to temperature and you come to a red light and the engine shuts off, I always forget that I forgot to turn that feature off. That's something that this Jeep does have that isn't my favorite. But the good thing is Jeep has a button that you can press that will turn that feature off so that as we're cruising around here, that's not startling me over and over again. So the first thing that I wanna talk about on the interior here is this big screen. Again, we have the optional package, so we have the larger screen here, and I do wanna talk through some of the functions. So you have your radio on your left-hand side here, and this does have XM radio as well as, of course, AM, FM, your different radio stations. You can set your favorites, pretty much work it as you would a regular radio. It's not something that I personally am used to. I don't have that in my daily driver. Um, having the XM radio and I really like it. The next feature is going to be your media. You can plug in USB, you can go down here to the media port and you can actually um, put your auxiliary in there as well. So you have a couple of different options for inputs. Of course, you can also sync your phone with Bluetooth directly to this and that will allow you to play your music through here as well. 
Uh, the next button over is going to be your climate button and you can adjust all of your temperatures here. You can also control where the air is coming from and if you have the cold weather package, which we do, you can control your heated seats and your heated steering wheel as well. Of course, you also have physical tactile buttons down here for the heated seats and for the heating steering wheel, as well as for your temperatures and your fan. But a lot of that stuff is also accessible through the main screen here. Here you have your Uconnect apps. And some of these are things that we already saw buttons for. So heated seats, heated steering wheel. You can access your backup camera through here. You can turn on and off your auto dimming rear view mirror through these screens here. So you have a lot of different features and a lot of different settings that you can get to. So that's going to be a screen that you might not use all the time because you can access a lot of these things in other ways, but for settings and for getting everything set up, you are going to be going through there. And you have some other controls here. That's basically just your heat, your steering wheel, your mirror. Again, this is now the third time that we've seen buttons for that and then you also have the physical button so no shortage of ways to control those aspects of your Jeep and then we have the nav so the navigation is actually very good it has uh, your regular map views that you can zoom in and out of gives you your speedometer on the map as well you can go back to the menu here put in uh, your location and it, it works pretty well I've never been impressed by really impressed by a factory navigation system when you're used to using say Google Maps on your phone um, that always works better in my opinion, but this is going to be an option for you and it, it will work pretty well. You also have a uh, trails option. So this is something where if you go off road, you can record breadcrumbs and then you can play back. So when you are on the trail, you can find your way back again. So that's something that's really nice that not a lot of the other factory navs had. You had to find an aftermarket off road specific nav to have that type of feature, which is, uh, which is great to have that built in here. This button over here is your phone button. So if you have your phone connected via Bluetooth, this is going to give you all of your contacts information. You can go to your keypad, you can make calls, you can go through your contact list, your messages you can read there. So you have a lot of different features that you can access all through here. And that's just having your phone connected via Bluetooth. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about, and this button actually changes when you have your phone plugged in, is the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay. So you have both those options depending on what type of phone you have. And this vehicle is the first vehicle that I've really had a chance to play with this type of setup on, and I really, really like the way that it works. So when you have your phone actually plugged in, you'll see this button over here changes, and you can go ahead and hit the, uh, the Android button, and it mirrors some of the apps that are on your phone. You can see here you have uh, sort of a main screen here. Music, if you're playing music through your phone, that'll show up here. A shortcut to get you home through your navigation systems. A couple things that you might have on your calendar as well are gonna show up here. Weather is gonna show up here. So that's sort of your home screen and that's in the middle here. Now on the left hand side, you can go to your maps and this is Google Maps. So if you prefer to use Google Maps because you have your traffic and you have very quick rerouting and say you don't get the nav in your JL, you can use this to get you where you need to go through your phone. Um, or if you just prefer this over the nav that's actually in the Jeep, then you can use this and that, that's a really great feature. Here you have your phone again. That's pretty much the same setup that you had even if you connected your phone via Bluetooth. A little bit different user interface, but pretty much the same features there. Over here you're going to have some of the music features. So any app that you have that plays music that's Android Auto compatible is going to be listed here. So your Pandora, your Spotify, any of those other apps that play music are gonna be listed right through here. So you can go ahead and play those directly through there. And then finally over here, you can return to Uconnect while still having your phone plugged in. If you wanna go back to your standard Uconnect user interface and get out of Android Auto, but still have your phone plugged in for charging. So this is something that I'm, I'm really excited about. I really, really like. I, I know that it's not a JL specific feature, but it is something that I'm really glad Jeep added into the JL. In order to have that Android Auto or the Apple CarPlay, of course you have to be plugged in via USB. So like I said, here you have a USB port in your media here, and there's also one in the center console. So you can be plugged in in a couple of different ways. You have a couple of different options. So now we'll go directly below that Uconnect screen. And a lot of the buttons that you have up here, you're going to have tactile again, and some buttons that you don't have on the screen, you'll only have the tactile button. So you have your three knobs, uh, uh, volume, your fan speed, and your tune or browse scroll wheel. In the middle here you have your defrost buttons. 
This Jeep again has the cold weather package, so you're going to have your heated steering wheel and your heated seats. Dual climate control, so you have two uh, temperature control levels here. You can also just turn your fan to auto, where it'll automatically control where the air is coming out of and the temperature of the air, something I personally really like. A couple down the bottom here, you have a mute button that comes in handy. Um, this is where that auto start button is, so you can turn that feature on and off. Unfortunately, every time you turn the, the Jeep on and off again, it automatically turns that feature back on. It doesn't save your last setting. Right next to it, you have your traction control, your hazards, your downhill uh, speed descent. You're still going to have that. The JK had that as well. And then right next to that, you have a screen off button, so that'll kill this completely, whether it's just too distracting for you, or you don't want it on for some other reason, you hit that button and you kill it. Uh, dropping down from there, you have your window buttons. Uh, you can turn the rear window controls on and off because as I said, in the center stack, you do have rear window buttons for your rear seat passengers. Now, going back into the center section here, because as different as this is, this is very different as well, this dashboard area. What you have here are two analog gauges. On the right-hand side, you have your speedometer. On your left, you have your tachometer, and everything else is a screen. The gauges that you're gonna have there all the time are going to be your fuel gauge and your coolant temperature that's going to be there all the time as well. Obviously, those are things that you're going to be wa wanting to be monitoring all the time, so they're, they're always going to be there for you. Across the top, you have three areas that you can completely customize, so a lot of stuff that you can set up to give you exactly the information you wanna see while you're driving in the Jeep. So as you scroll through here, number one is going to be your speedometer. It gives you a big digital speedometer. Of course, you already have your analog speedo, but if you wanted to have a digital speedometer, you have that option. And if you go down from there, this is gonna give you vehicle information. So this tells you what PSI your tires are at. You can go over and take a look at your coolant temperature in a different way, your trans temp, your oil temp, oil pressure, oil life, and then finally your battery voltage. So a lot of information that you otherwise don't have gauges for is gonna be available right through the center section there, which is great. Going back down, you have an off-road specific screen. So that's going to tell you where your transfer case is, if it's locked or if it's unlocked, and it's also going to tell you the angle of your tires. Uh, which is helpful if you're in an off-road situation, you can't exactly see where your tires are, maybe you don't have a spotter, you're gonna be able to look right there on that off-road screen. Then you can also check out your pitch and roll screen, so that tells you what angle the Jeep is at. If you're in an off-camber situation, you wanna make sure you're not gonna roll, uh, that's gonna help you out with that. Jumping down to the next screen is your fuel economy screen. It gives you your current and your average MPG, and that'll give you for a couple of different trips. So you can do a trip A and a trip B. Down a little bit further, you have trip information. Again, trip A and trip B tells you your time, uh, your MPG, and your mileage of those different trips. So that's really your trip odometer. Uh, next is going to give you the status of your auto start feature. Going down, you have your audio. So if we go back here to radio, it's going to tell you what station you're on. And you still have your buttons on the back of your steering wheel here that you can scroll through. If we go down, you have your messages. So we have no stored messages currently, but that will give you access to any sort of messages that you might have. And finally, we get to the screen setup. Now this is not available while you're in motion, but this is the screen that you're going to use to customize the three small screens across the top. So right now I have from left to right the compass, my range till empty, and the outside temperature. But again, I can really customize those. Compass, outside temperature, your time, range to empty, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, trip A or B distances. And then you can also turn any of them off across the top if you don't want that much information, if it's distracting and you just wanna see uh, nothing up there. Uh, between the two screens here, you really have a ton of information. Anything you would wanna know about your Jeep, you are going to have access to. Just to the left of that main screen is a small screen, and it's still a digital screen. It's gonna give you your transfer case selection, what you're currently selected. Now, because this Jeep does have the select track, I can go ahead and shift into four high auto on this dry road, and it's not really gonna hurt anything, and it changes the selection up top to four high auto. Uh, jumping back to the steering wheel for a second, I was working through all of those menus with the arrows and the OK button on the left hand side. Then you have your phone, answer and hang up on the left as well as your voice recognition. This system is very good. It's very usable. However, if you have an Android or an Apple phone, I would go ahead and plug your phone in and then you're gonna be able to use uh, the Google Assistant with this same button, which is very, very nice because you know how accurate that is and all the different things that that, that Google Assistant is able to do for you. To the right-hand side of the steering wheel, that's where your cruise control is going to be set and that's pretty standard there. This is actually both a tilt and telescoping steering column. 
And that's something that is really, really nice. Not just for somebody who's tall like myself, no matter what size and body shape you are, being able to adjust the seat completely and also being able to adjust the steering column completely really lets you get in a comfortable driving position. So that's really nice. Now, speaking of adjusting the seat, you of course have the tilt of the back of the seat. Um, you can pump the seat so that you can move it up and you can move it down, giving you a higher or lower seat overall. In this Jeep, I also have lumbar support so I can actually control where the lumbar support is. I can roll it up and down uh, in the back of the seat. So I'm definitely adding a, a comfort level. Over on the left-hand side, you have your controls for your lights. So we have the LED lighting package. You can turn them off, parking lights, headlights, and then there's also an auto on this Jeep here, so it'll automatically turn those on and off for you. You also have your fog lights where you can turn those on, and then you're going to have two different dimming wheels. One is going to be for your interior overhead lights, and then the other is going to be for your gauges, so you can really customize the interior lights. I personally like all of my dash lights to be very dim when I'm driving at night, so that gives you the ability to, uh, to dim those out and to change that, which is going to be really nice. If you move over onto the door, you have your power mirror selections left, right, and then you can move them around, you have your power locks, your pretty standard stuff. A couple more things that I do want to note on the interior here, I have my home link, my home connect buttons up here so I can program up to three different garage door openers into this piece here that is molded directly into my visor so I don't have additional uh, garage door opener is actually attached up there. That's a really nice feature. This mirror is auto dimming in the Sahara here. And above that you have an assist and an SOS button. The assist is going to link you through to your Uconnect, one of your Uconnect apps. Um, so as long as you have your subscription through Uconnect, you can go ahead and use that. And then your SOS, of course, if you get yourself into a situation where you need some help, you can press that button and that's going to send somebody right out and help you. So that's gonna do it for the overall review of the interior of the JL. I know a lot of you guys are gonna hate on it because of how refined it is. Personally, I come from a TJ. I come from very few creature comforts, but maybe it's because I'm getting a little bit older. I don't know what it is. But even though this is a Jeep, I like having these extra features. I like it being comfortable if it's going to be my daily driver. And a lot of these things do add a lot of comfort and a lot of modern conveniences that I really like. But it's still a Jeep. It's still incredibly capable. It looks like a Jeep. It drives like a Jeep. It feels like a Jeep. It's just a little bit more comfortable than some of the Jeeps of the past. So I really like what Jeep has done with this. Go ahead and comment below. I know a lot of you will disagree. Uh, I'm sure some of you will agree as well. Comment below and make sure that you're also subscribed to our YouTube channel. That's going to give you access to all of the other review videos that we have done and all the ones that are going to be coming up.